Hey everybody, I'm Lashes Lane, and this is episode 11 of the Sober Showgirl podcast. I am so excited to be back with a brand new episode. My last episode, I was by the pool in Puerto Rico. I am back in my bedroom for this week's topic, and I have a brand new microphone, which is super freaking exciting. I'm really happy you guys are here. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Lashes. I am a burlesque performer. I've been sober for two and a half years, going on three, going on forever. Sobriety has been the best gift I've ever given to myself, and I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to share my journey with all of you guys and film this podcast. This has been really healing for me, and I hope these episodes are hitting you in the perfect spot in your soul wherever you are on your journey. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your time with me. And if you are a returning listener, thank you for being here as well. I'm really excited to be hanging out with all of you guys and sharing this time together. So let's get into today's topic. This one's a little bit heavier than the topics that I have been sharing in previous episodes. A little emotional. We are going to be talking about dealing with the ghost of our drunken past. And that is really tough. That's a really tough thing to navigate no matter where you're at in your sobriety journey. Um, I know that there's a lot of things that I am not proud of that I've done in my past. I'm sure there's a lot of things that you are not proud of that you have done in your past. And with these things, even if we don't want to talk about them, even if we've never talked about them, they haunt us no matter how much time passes, right? There are a lot of things that I've done. I've made a fool of myself at parties. I have ruined friendships. I've prioritized the wrong friendships with the wrong people. I've put myself in danger. I've put other people in danger. The list goes on, right? And those things will just haunt me sometimes in the middle of the night. And it's gotten better as my journey has progressed. But my first year of sobriety, these thoughts would just hit me like a ton of bricks and I would just want to throw the blankets over my head and stay in bed because I just felt so mortified of how I acted previously. I just couldn't believe some of the things I did. I did a lot of stuff that the person I was growing to become was just not not about. And as I grew in my journey, I realized that I didn't want to be held back by these memories. I didn't want these ghosts haunting me to the point where I just felt like I wanted to hide from them. I didn't want all of these ghosts to be like looming over me and making me feel like I just needed to hide in my bed, in my room with the door shut. (laughs) That kind of stuff can make you do that. You're just remembering the person you used to be and it shuts you down. Just makes you feel so embarrassed, you know, so mortified about who you were. When we really should be focusing on who we're becoming. It's hard to let go of our past and really focus on our future. And I wish there was like a magical phrase or... (laughs) a magical little activity we could do to make healing easy. But we really have to face our demons head on and we have to practice forgiveness. There are some things that we've all done where they are never going to feel good when you think about them. You know, there's some memories that are always going to feel pretty lousy, but our past is a part of us. It's part of who we are. And we have to take those bad memories and grow from them. All of the shit that we are not proud of can turn us into better people. Instead of dwelling on those mistakes, turning the lights out and hiding in your room, under the covers, in your bed, take those mistakes and focus on how to make yourself a better person how to never, ever do those things again and just grow and become the best version of yourself. That's all we can do with the bad stuff in our past. It's not easy. And me saying, like, just take that stuff 
and grow. That's, it's just, it's not like a two-step process. There's always going to be moments that we are not proud of, and we just can't let them haunt us to the point where we are so frozen in the past that we're limiting our future. If we let the ghosts haunt us, our future isn't going to be everything it can be. We are putting so much work into ourselves. Our new selves deserve the chance to fully grow and blossom. And we have to just get to a point where we start to let stuff go. Again, it's not going to feel good sometimes when we think about things. Perhaps you ruined a friendship, okay? Let's use that as an example. Let's say you were a total asshole and you did some stuff that you're not proud of and you ruined a friendship, right? We'll keep it vague so it's relatable for everybody. You might never be able to repair this friendship. Maybe you won't even have a chance to apologize and make amends. But you have to take your experience and let it fuel you to be the person you want to be instead of just sitting there and dwelling on the past. Take those memories and make them make you better. It's always going to feel lousy when you look back on it, but don't let it paralyze you and make it so you're afraid to make new friends. Sometimes it's hard to let people in because you are ashamed of who you used to be and you're scared because, you know, you used to have friends, but you effed it up, you know. There are some people that are only there for a season of your life and the friends that stick with you, they're going to be there and grow with you, you know. And maybe that's only one person. Maybe that's two people. Maybe it's just your mom or your cat. Sometimes there's only a couple people that stay with you through your whole journey, but you'll make new friends and you can't punish yourself and not let people in. Use your past experiences to grow and be a better friend to people. Be a better partner to people. Be a better employee. You know, whatever relationship you've tarnished in your past Use those experiences to make you better. That doesn't mean that it's not going to hurt. That doesn't mean it's not going to be painful. It might be really, really painful. That's why I'm saying this is not the easiest topic because there isn't like a magic little mantra that you can say. There isn't like three little tools that I'm giving you. It's really just like working through your emotions and your feelings Journaling really helps me be in the moment of my day. I have a gratitude journal from my friend Jada Blaze that I've been using every morning and every night. And it helps me kind of like center myself and be thankful for what's going on currently in my life. It keeps me present. I love that. Journaling's not going to be the answer for everything. But you can find tools that help you stay present with who you are now. I think the most important thing is to remember that like you changed yourself. We changed ourselves. We are not the same people that we were when we were drinking. That wasn't a true version of us, you know, and you're becoming who you truly are as a person. And that's something that you should be really proud of. So when your past haunts you, I don't want it to like ruin your thoughts on who you are and who you're becoming because who you're becoming is someone amazing, who you are is someone incredible. You made a positive change for yourself. You made a positive change for yourself. And that change is making you the best version of yourself. We quit alcohol. We quit drinking. We realized that that wasn't serving us. That wasn't good for our lives. That was not what we wanted to do. That wasn't who we wanted to be. So we can't sit here and let who we used to be haunt us and make us feel Like we are less than what we are now. We are like so fucking powerful now. We are becoming the most powerful versions of ourselves. We don't have alcohol in our system. We are more present. We are opening up to people now. We are being our true selves. 
So why are we going to let who we used to be haunt us to the point where we just don't want to leave our rooms? There are going to be patchy memories of nights that we wish never happened. There are going to be weird blackout blurs that we are trying to patch together now that we're sober. We're trying to piece together what the fuck we did back when we were drinking. Trying to remember nights that we can't remember because we were blacked out. Just trying to figure out, like, why we were the way that we were, you know? And when we're healing, we're like, oh, my God, how the fuck am I still alive? You know what I mean? We just have to be thankful that we are because we're here for a reason. And that reason isn't to just be depressed about the shit that we did before. The shit that we did before we got sober. We can't just fucking be depressed about that shit. We have to, like, work through it. Forgive ourselves. And start becoming who we want to be. I really dealt with this kind of stuff a lot in my early sobriety. I think my first year and a half. I had to, like, really forgive myself for acting a fool. Because you're not in your past or in your presence. All you can do is control the decisions that you're making now and be your best self now. Last year was a hard year for me with my mental health. I was really depressed. I was sober, but I was really struggling with like a lot of stuff mentally and working through a lot of issues. And it was really hard. Um, And this year I decided to really like take control of my life and really like lean into the person that I want to be and the person that I have become and find power in that and change my habits and it's been absolutely wonderful. Last year I did a health and wellness coaching certification that's like changed my life honestly and just applying those tools to my life has been really beneficial for me. I am really working on my own mental health and really trying to be present in the moment and that's been great Uh, a lot of the stuff that I learned was just about how much sleep you should get and like really taking care of your body and all of that stuff and I already was sober so I'm like why am I not taking care of my body in other aspects why am I not learning like better tools for stress management Uh, Why am I not identifying my stressors and, like, making my life better by eliminating those stressors, you know? And by doing that, it's given me a lot of healing in my mental health, sleeping more, identifying stressors, eliminating those stressors. And I feel like just taking care of myself in general when my mental health has helped kind of keep those thoughts at bay because I'm really focusing on how to be my best self And a part of that is I'm trying to be present in the moment. And when you're present in the moment, you're not really thinking about your past and letting it haunt you. So my biggest piece of advice is take care of yourself. Take care of your new self, your new person. Take care of that person and treat yourself good. Be proud of yourself. Be proud of everything you've accomplished. Getting sober is hard and you're doing it. We're doing it. And Take care of the person that you are. Believe in the person that you are becoming. Get sleep. Pull a daily manifestation tarot card. Like stretch, work out, take care of you because you are worth it. And the new you is worth everything. All of the stuff that you did in the past. Yeah, it's a part of you. Yes, you should grow from it. You should use these things as lessons and grow from them. But these mistakes, even though they're a part of you, they don't define you and they are not who you are. You're a new person. You are more than your past. You are more than your mistakes. We are growing. We are growing every day. We are becoming better versions of ourselves every day. And that is something to be proud of. To wrap up this episode, I just want to say that if you are currently being haunted by 
things that you have done in the past that you are not proud of, if your drunken ghosts are trying to get you in the middle of the night or during the day, just know that you're doing a good job. Be proud of yourself. You are taking the steps to be the best you, and that's really important. It's really important. Just know that, yes, those mistakes happened. Those horrible things happened. They don't define you. You are in charge of your story. You are in charge of your journey. And you get to make your story however the fuck you want it to be. You are the main character in it. You can do whatever you want. And all of the shit that happened in your previous chapters do not determine how your story ends. You are powerful. You are strong. And you are capable of achieving the life you want. And all of this shit that tries to haunt you doesn't have power over you. You have power over you. You're stronger than all of that shit. We are stronger than all of that shit. We can't let our past define us. And we are in control of our futures. I hope that this little pep talk helps you guys. I know it's hard. And I know there's going to be some nights when you have memories just flood you. And you need to work through it. Remember to just try to be present in the moment. Remember who you are right now. Remember who you're becoming. And just remember that your past is your past. And it's in your past. It doesn't need to be a part of your future. I love you guys so much. And I hope that this episode helped you today. I will be doing another episode next week. And I'm really excited to see you guys again. If you want me to cover a certain topic, please drop it in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Love you guys so much.